Steve Evans, have you had time to sit down and reflect on Saturday's result? Yeah, of course. From from the minute the final whistle goes until we until we review it with the boys on the video this morning, um, which we're just about to do. Hey, listen, everyone knows first half we were poor. No one has to educate me. Um, I take a lot of responsibility for the first half shape and team and personnel because it, it wasn't where it should have been. It was done for the right reasons and the thought process and the planning, but it was wrong. We changed it around to a more suitable shape and system and personnel for the second half, and that worked. You know, we're two and up. Should have been three, four, five, one up even. And then when you don't take those chances, you're experiencing it off in football to know you leave yourself open to a sucker punch. We just didn't know whether that knockout punch was going to come from the assistant referee. You know, if the Port Vale lad breaks in the box and puts it in the top corner. But they've got good players. I think the supporters played a big part in getting the plant there. So it, it really was, you know, Port Vale supporters got the equaliser for me. Um, and the assistant referee gets up to it. It clearly hits Dan, Childer on, uh, Dan Butler on the shoulder joint, which is which above the sleeve is, is not a penalty, doesn't matter where your arm is. But listen, it's not the first bad decision that's gone against us, is it, this season? We've had lots and lots. So we, we move on from it, and our only focus is Matty Taylor bringing his, his pistol over us tomorrow night to the Lamex. One of the th key things to see from Saturday was you need to take your chances when you get them to, to not give anyone else a chance to get back into the game. Yeah, very much so, and it's, it, it's, it's degrees of chances. We've all been in games where it's two or three little chances, half chances, and you're thinking, maybe you should have scored it. These are big, big chances. After that has to be said, some really good play. You know, brilliant challenge from Van Kooten sends it through to Reedy and Kane gets a little flex of Reedy's through and go and doesn't take the, the chance, but he's getting hustled a bit. Finlay Bonds, who I thought was outstanding for 75 minutes, does brilliant in midfield, wins the ball, goes forward, 2-1-2s, two -two through and go. Picky spot, and I think I think he's seen the headlines. And um, so he blazed it over, but hey, listen, it, it doesn't take away from his outstanding performance. And they don't take away from your right that experience tells your supporters would have known we missed those big chances right in front of them as well. And thank you to everyone on the game. If we um, if we take that third goal, we you'd never say it, but you you probably win five. How do you communicate to the players? Is it in terms of is it a coaching thing or a mentality thing? You should tell them. To yeah, I think I think I think both. First half is mentality. I think I said after the game, first half I felt there's a little bit of respect from. Some of our players, not all of our players, some of our players. And it's not they go out with that blase approach that they don't respect. They just think, how can we deal with this? And it's off the shoulder. Whereas when we play the bigger clubs in the league, we've not really seen that. You know, and that, that comes from just respect of the names of the clubs. Um, and mentality is about seeing the game through. You know, we make a couple of individual errors that we wouldn't normally make. So that's a learning point. That's on the video. That's on the coaching ground. And the boys will learn from that. The one thing we've got, we, we're not going to swap that group in the dressing room for anyone in this league. We've got brilliant, brilliant characters. And that performance level is going to have to raise again for tomorrow night? Against yeah, I think so. Well, it's, it's a game in hand against two or three of them around them, or one of the potential game in hand around one or two that are not playing. Quite a lot are. Um, Bristol Rovers have, have um, been in mixed form. They've had some really wonderful results since Matty came in, and one or two that have gone against them. Yesterday, I took the time to, to watch your Bristol Rovers game. Um, without a doubt, you've got a point. You know, they've, they've pulled a goal back and then they've laid sage to the goal, but it didn't happen for them. So they'll come here. They've got one or two players, one back from injury, one back from suspension. And we just need to make sure we are ready to, um, first and foremost, for us to get the team and the system right. And then secondly, for, uh, for our players to stand up and, and produce, which they've done lots and lots of times this season, a really good, competent, professional performance. And you get the feeling if they produced the performance they did, did against Reading last week, this week they will probably. Come yeah, listen, I think I think your supporters who come to all the whole games would realise the difference in the performance from Blackpool to Reading. We won one of those games one 0 and we lost one of them one 0 The only thing that sticks in in here a little bit is the two penalties that the EFL say we should have had against Reading, handball, and Ben Thompson getting taken out late on. They're a bit harder to take, especially when it happened at Port Vale at the weekend, which is not apparently given against us. Um, but her performance levels has to be up at that level if, if we have to beat Bristol Rovers. And what an incentive we've got, you know, to stay in the playoffs. I give a hand over others to take yourself away from the, the pack chasing us. And who thought in St. Patrick's Day, the 17th of March, 18 months ago, 19 months ago, 
that we'd be sitting here talking about the possibility of trying to get in these League One playoffs. Staggering progress, but we've, you know, we we need to kick on a little bit more if we're to see that through because there's some real competition for these top places. But results are hard to achieve. Look at the results on Saturday: Bolton, you know, Derby, Peterborough. You know, it's only Portsmouth that leaders went and got a result. Oxford and Blackpool drew, which we all thought might happen. I haven't played Blackpool recently. So it's we just need to look after ourselves. And one thing I said to the players after the game, it's okay to come in and ask what else happened elsewhere in, in League One. But really, if you look after yourself, you don't need to think about what's happening elsewhere. And just finally, it's another opportunity to create a magical night for sports under the lights at the Linux on Tuesday night. Well, we need them. You know, it's what... Two games to look forward to if you're a player, if you're a supporter. Bristol Rovers at home. Bristol Rovers. Followed by Derby County away. Just absolutely amazing. Five days the players and staff and supporters have got ahead of us. And sometimes we pinch ourselves a little bit and say, we really play in Bristol Rovers to stay in the League One playoff race. And then we go to Derby to beat Derby to be above in the League One. So, <laughs> staggering. Come on, get to the limits. That's great. Thank you, Gaffer.